welcome to Bethlehem Matriculation Higher Secondary School online class. I am Benila, your English teacher. Okay, now let me go for the last poem. That is, uh, Once Upon a Time is written by Gabriel Okara. What is the heading of the poem? Once Upon a Time by Gabriel Okara. Okay, so this is the first poem in this uh, 11th grade. You don't have any memory poem, so you don't have to memorize this. Okay, now let me go tell about Gabriel Okara. He was born on 25th April 1921 and died on 25th March 2019. It is a last year he died. And he is a Nigerian poet and novelist. He is considered to be one of the first modern African poets. As he is a Nigerian, he is an African poet. He is considered as the one of the most, uh, that is one of the modern African poets he is considered to be. And the next, his, his verse has been translated into several languages. So as it is a, it is a popular poet, his verses has been translated into many languages. And his works it is, that is appeared in the magazine Black of Fears from 1957. So he started his writings everything and it was published. So whenever you wanted to write a poem, it will be published in the local magazines. So here, this, uh, his, uh, uh, his work it was published in Black or Fears, that is in the year 1957 it was published. And uh, he got many awards also, that is the award for literature at the Nigerian Festival Arts in 1953. And uh, the poem he has written, The Call of the River Nun. So other uh, works also, his first novel is The Voice, that is the linguistic uh, uh, experiment he has done. And other more works, what he has done is the collection of poems he has written, uh, The Fisherman in, in Invocation, that is, a, it is written in the year 1978. And two books for children, that is Little Snake and uh, Little Frog, that also it is written in 1981. Another one book. An Adventure of Juju Island, that is in 1992. So about the writer, let me read. Take your textbook, page number 22. About the author, take it. Okay, now let me read. Listen. Gabriel Okara, born in 1921, is a Nigerian poet and novelist. His verse has been translated into several languages. And his poem, The Call of the River Nun, won the best award for literature at the Nigerian Festival of Arts in 1953. Some of his poems were published in the influential periodical Black Orpheus, and by 1960 he established himself as an accomplished writer. He was honored with the Commonwealth Poetry Award. Okara's typical poem transits from everyday reality to the moments of delight and moves back to reality, making a complete circle. Okara infused African thought, folklore and imagery into both his verse and prose. His first novel, The Voice, is an outstanding linguistic experiment. His later works include a collection of poems, The Fisherman's Invocation, that is in the year 1978, and two books for children, Little Snake and Little Frog in 1981, and An Adventure, Adventure to Juju Island in 1992. So about the author, you came to know that. Let me move on to the poem. Take page number 20. Take the poem. Once Upon a Time. So have you heard of this uh, heading, Once Upon a Time? Yeah, when uh, somebody is narrating a story, you might have heard that once upon a time, that is a lion, that was a, a king. So this all type of uh, story when they are telling, the fairy tale when they are telling, they will be starting with the heading once upon a time. Okay, so now this uh, heading once upon a time, you came to understand that it is related to the past, past event. Okay. So now here the writer, he wants to tell about his past and he wants to compare with the present. So comparing with the present life, he wanted to tell to the uh, son. That is, the father to his son is the bond here. 
So already in the first lesson we have seen the writer Kushwan Singh, uh, the, uh, that is the uh, relationship between the grandmother and the writer, is it? Okay, so here we are going to see the relationship between the narrator and the listener is the father and son. Okay, so now uh, let me move on to the warmer. Uh, guess what friendly words these two gentlemen exchange when shaking hands. So there is a picture about two persons, they are shaking their hands. Okay, so you can imagine what uh, friendly words or casually they will be talking to each other. What are the words they will be using here? Okay, so one person will be telling, hi, you are very happy to see you or very glad to meet you, one person will be telling. So other person also will be telling, yeah, I am happy to meet you too. So the relationship between the two, it shows that they are very happy. But are you sure that they are very happy to meet each other? Sometimes we will be meeting our friends. So we will be very happy to meet them. And wholeheartedly we will be saying very happy to meet you. Some other friends, they are not your friends. They may be your relatives. You are not happy to see them. But what you will be saying by seeing them, you will be saying, yeah, I am happy to see you. Yeah, there is a difference between their friends and relatives. Even you are not happy, you are telling, conveying the words, I am happy to see you. Yes, this is the reality and the uh, uh, past what you are telling to the other persons. Only is that in the lesson, in the poem. Okay, now let me tell you the next one. The children in the picture are watching an exciting sporting event where their school team is winning. Such a suitable utterance reflecting their feelings see the children they are playing in the picture you can see that is very happy moment they are expressing that so one person will be telling hooray our team has won the match so very happy they are so the expression is real their happiness is real okay so this is the relationship between the real life and the past which you don't show the happiness okay so next one is given give Given a chance, any adult would wish to become a child again for many reasons. Fill the boxes with some of what you imagine could be the reasons. So example it is given, I need not worry about project deadlines. So when you, you are, uh, imagine that you are a child and you have many reasons to ha be happy. Here one reason is given, I need not worry about any project deadlines. So now also you are at home. You don't want to worry about any project or any homework. You can be very free. That is the happiest moment you have. So next one is, I can wear my pyjamas and a whole day. So you are happy. You don't want to wear any your uniform. You can be very happy in your um, casual dress. So this is the very happiest one for you. The next one, I can sleep as long as I like. This is the very happiest one for everyone. So as long as you like you can sleep nobody will disturb you nobody your parents will never wake up you for uh, get up go to school like that they will never say so this is the happiest so in the other boxes also you can write what are the other things you feel some persons will feel i have to play always in my mobile i have to enjoy in playing games in the laptop this is all the things so such a, uh, things you can write what is the happiest uh, things you you you, uh, you are wishing to do that everything you can write it up you can fill it up in the boxes given okay now take uh, move on to the poem take page number 21 children acquire important life skills and values by observing and imitating grown ups like parents or teachers can it be the other way round now you are going to listen to the poem once upon a time when a parent wants to learn something from the son let's find out how so now here already i told you that this is the relationship between the narrator and the listener who is the narrator here narrator is narrator and listener who is the narrator here father who is the listener? Son. So here, the father is narrating the poem to his son. The narrating the ex, uh, past event, what he has felt, and now in the present life, what are the changes are there? That he is telling to his son is a poem here. And now, many people, you will be uh, looking into the small kids you might have seen. 
always they will be imitating others that is uh, you you may have your younger sister or brother you may have so then they what they will be doing they will be seeing the elder one and they will be imitating to do some activities uh, so uh, some other uh, what they wanted to do this everything they will be doing so here they are going to see about the parents and teachers and they will be imitating in the uh, house they will be playing like a, uh, and uh, taking the stick and they will be acting like a teacher i am your teacher please listen like that the ch small children are small all kids they will be acting or like a parents i am your mother obey my words like that they will be telling so like this uh, you might have seen many things but in the reverse you go for that small kids they are imitating the parents or teachers reverse you go for the parents or teachers or the elder person they wanted to go or they wanted to look back to their uh, uh, olden days that is their small childhood days they wanted to look into so imagine that how it will be so always you as a higher classes sir uh, students what you will be doing you will be telling that in olden days in 10th standard or in my childhood days i was very happy i was enjoying very well i was playing i was running here and there uh, nobody used to scold me this is all the things you will be telling so like that you will be happy about your childhood days so now you are going to see that the author that is the writer gabriel okara that is a listen that is a narrator the father he is going to tell about his own experience in his childhood days in olden days how it was so as he is a nigerian poet he is going to bring a change a modern culture to the uh, african society he is going to tell that well before the cultural changes comes into the society or how the society was okay so when there is a cultural change in the society everything has changed in olden days the dress wearing was different but in the modern days the dress uh, what they dress code everything is changed so like that uh, the writer is going to tell to his son in olden days we was happy we was laughing whole heartedly we was uh, enjoying the all the uh, things uh, but now we are not happy the people who is laughing is not uh, happy laughing with their heart they are just smiling they are just showing their teeth so they are not whole heartedly laughing so this one only is there in the poem once upon a time here okay now let me tell about the poem here once upon a time is a free verse of poem containing 43 lines are there in this poem and broken up into seven stanzas how many stanzas there are seven stanzas free verse means there is no limit for the stanzas or lines or this many lines a poem contains a paragraph should be contain four lines or like that it is not the it is a free verse that is a 43 lines and the stanzas is it is seven stanzas it is them okay i already told you it is not a memory poem you don't have any memory poem in your grade 11 and 12 okay are you happy for that yeah Okay, now let me move on to the lesson. The theme of the lesson is how the society changes or the cultural shift. What it has done is a theme in this poem. Okay, take your book, page number twenty-one, and now uh, let me go for the reading the first paragraph and let me explain you. Okay, once upon a time, son, they used to laugh with their hearts, but. what is happening once upon a time i told you it is says about the olden days he is telling to his son once upon a time what they will be doing they used to laugh with their hearts so whole heartedly with warm they are laughing they have every emotion with eyes everything it shows the pleasure the happiest moment they have so with that happiness it will come as a smile and they will be showing the smile and laugh with their eyes how they are laughing the happiness it will shows the warmth it will shows in their eyes so when we are seeing some eye contact we can feel that they are really they are talking the truth or they are telling lie we can i identify that so in olden days what they was doing they was showing their smile with the whole heartedly by with their eyes but now they only laugh with their teeth so but now what they are doing now at present moment the people they are laughing with the fake laugh that is a uh, laughing without any emotion they don't have any emotion just they laugh and when their eyes block cold eyes eyes block cold eyes means Eyes, okay, listen. Eyes block cold eyes. That is, eyes lacking a feeling of warmth. 
so some comfortable feeling this everything is lacking in their eyes so this is called eyes block cold eyes okay so search behind my shadows so they cannot they cannot identify their real emotion so just they will be searching where they have the happiness so they cannot feel the real emotion there so this is the first stanza so here the poet wanted to say to his son once upon a time son and they used to laugh with their hearts and now they are laughing with their only with their teeth that is the fake laugh they have they don't have the real one and eyes block cold eyes their eyes are lacking the feeling or they are comfortable or the warmth it is lacking that and search behind my shadow so everyone they are searching behind my shadow that is the comfortable or the real one they are searching behind me and the next paragraph second paragraph there was a time indeed so which does exist there was a time which does exist they used to shake hands with their hearts so what the people used to do when they meet each other they will shake their hands with pleasure and warm very happiness they will be shaking their hands so whenever we are meeting some persons we will be shaking their hands with very happy yeah, hi hello how are you so this all the things will be saying but nowadays it is not needed to shake hands up. as it is corona you don't want to shake the hands to each other it is not needed but that's gone son so here he is telling so in olden days they was having a comfortable to meet each other they'll be having a handshake with comfortably but now everything has gone my son so he is telling to his son those days everything has went and it is not here it is not comfortable now those habits everything gone now shake, they shake hands without hearts so how they are doing nowadays they are greeting each other without any warmth they don't have any comfortable they uh, never shake their hands with their hearts up while their left hand search my empty pockets so if nowadays what is happening when each person is shaking their hands the other person is looking into the other one how they are looking into whether he is having a comfortable wealth and he is having money they are searching into the others pocket so whether he is good at everything they are looking when they are shaking the hands in olden days how they will be shaking their hands they will never see anything they will see the happiest moment alone they will be sharing each other but nowadays when they are shaking the hands what they are doing they are looking into the others pocket whether he is having enough wealth or not and when he is calculating how he would be exploited this everything he is calculating and then only he is shaking the hands up and next paragraph feel at home come again they say and when i come again and feel at home once tw twice that will be no thrice for them i find door shut on me so now feel at home how, what is the meaning of feel at home yeah you are feeling very comfortable so where you will be feeling uh, very comfortable at home yeah it is true so very comfortable feel at home means somebody is telling them feel at home come again you have to come to my house again and again you have to come they say but when the person is going to their home they feel comfortable that is one first time they will be feeling comfortable once twice the second time also they are okay at, but the third time what they are doing they are not feeling comfortable so that is a proverb that is a uh, says in the olden days the people uh, they will be inviting to, uh, guests to their house and the first day they will be giving a lot of food for them that is a variety of foods they will be serving for the guests and the second day the food serving which will be reduced up okay they will never be much comfortable of serving the food or uh, giving the comfortable for the guests the third day they will be normal they will not be overjoyed with the arrival of the guest term. so like the same thing here uh, when somebody is coming to my house or some coming to the house what they will be doing they will be feeling comfortable for the first day first day they will be okay the second day also it is okay but the third time when they are coming they are they are ready to come to their house for then i find those shut on me so if the third time if the guests again and again they are coming to their place what they will do they will shut the door they will never allow the persons to come come again so here you might have seen your relatives also when some person is coming again and again to your house so what you will do you will not feel much happy of them you will be shutting the doors whether you will be shutting the doors no okay you are good children
okay so that he is telling that in olden days they will be welcoming us very well but now they are not welcoming first day they will be welcoming second day they will welcome but the third time they will shut the door and if you are a frequent visitor they will be closing the doors off. okay children the remaining paragraphs we will see in the next class thank you